have to do this video then. Check, check. One, two, three. Welcome to Art Battle Boston. Um, well, there it is. Yeah, that's good, Heather. Um, how are you doing tonight, Heather? I'm good. Uh, doing well. Sorry for the delay. <laughs> yeah, that's no good. problem. You're perfectly on Cutting time. What, tell us about your cat. <laughs> um, he's an orange tabby. He's a big fat, like Garfield, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Best sound check ever. <laughs> so, <you're> right? <laughs> uh, yeah, he's a little ball of anxiety. He's great. How about you? What's uh, what's your dog like? Although, do you need me to keep talking? Yeah, Simon, how are the levels? Uh, the levels actually sound pretty good. Uh, I think we're we're good here. Um, I'll I'll tweak it. I mean, we can we can tweak as we're going, but it's definitely within a good uh, range. So I'll leave it to you guys. Either you can chat, and it's no problem to let the audience listen. Obviously, we'll chat about uh, you know art battle stuff art. and art rather than right. cats and dogs. Although whatever you want, um, but we are <laughs> we will go live at uh, in nine minutes. Well, in eight minutes now at seven o'clock, uh, it goes live on Facebook. So do the. Um, the intro at that time if that seems good to you morgan um okay yeah i'll do intro at that time because i want to just uh get to the bathroom before we start and let the dog okay, out. no problem so okay, great Heather, so if you want to give me a call back in like seven minutes sure I'm... yeah no problem awesome okay. okay great and if you guys need me to do to bridge the call just send me a message i'm, I'm not sure if it's easy to just click and, and call Heather, but if that works, that's great. Otherwise, just message me and I'll help. Okay. That sounds good. Okay, chat to you guys. Okay, yeah. thanks, Simon. Bye. Thank you, bye.
Okay, sounds good. Okay, hello and welcome everyone to Art Battle Boston. Welcome, welcome. We have just entered round number one uh, where these artists will have 20 minutes to go from blank canvas to incredible piece, uh, all for your votes. My name is Morgan Booth. I'm your commentator for tonight and I am here with Art Battle Salt Lake City winner, Heather Olson. Hi, Heather. Hi, everyone. Hi, Morgan. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thanks. So Heather's going to be... Uh, Thanks so much for having me tonight. Absolutely. Uh, very happy to have you. And yeah, we've got six incredible artists. Uh, looks like they are underway. And starting uh, with some sketching here, I believe, from... Jen. Oh, Jen is going in with some uh, yellow paint right now. And some background work, laying in the groundwork. That's awesome. Oh, that's John. My uh, my screen was pixelated. Sorry, John. <laughs> Just trying to read the name cards. <laughs> okay, and here we are at easel number two with awesome. Maggie McCullen. Uh, starting us off with what looks like a blue fish. And, oh, that's going to be awesome. And we can see that she's using her reference. Um, a sketch or a small painting that she made is sitting already at the top of the easel. I love uh, when artists bring their own original works uh, to support them as their references. I think that's so cool. And really helpful, too. I would think. I mean, I know I like to use a reference. Yeah. It makes things a little bit easier, especially under the time restraint, you know? Yeah, definitely. And that's a, that's a new thing for Art Battle. We've only started doing that in the last uh, two years or so, allowing references. And we're finding that uh, the quality of the work is really uh, in leaps and bounds when artists are permitted that. Yeah. Right, yeah. I've noticed that also. Okay, and seeing Maggie uh, just putting in some softer tones there. Okay, and here we are back with John, and looks like John has uh, filled his whole canvas very rapidly with uh, a really gorgeous oh, color yeah. field. Big brush helps. Yeah, definitely. That's an awesome big brush. <laughs> and I believe that this is Chelsea, and Chelsea was a 2020 Texas finalist. So she is not here to play tonight. Oh, nice. Yeah. Serious contender. She's a uh, she's no rookie here. Ooh, oh, I'm loving this like the glow of this heart that uh, I believe this is Fallon. Yeah, what she was able to do with those edges, get them nice and glowing, like that heart is literally beating or glowing. Yeah, just getting that gorgeous blend giving you that kind of sense of like depth in the canvas and she describes her work as psychedelic naturalism and uh, is often featuring a lot of galaxies and kind of otherworldly landscapes so I feel like that's the vibe that we're getting here uh, with her oh cool cool there's some awesome tools being used different than a paintbrush yeah, is that uh, like That's a awesome. wedge or something that Brett's got there? Oh, we've panned away from him. Looks we'll like it. Um, I I have one of those that I use all the time, and I love it. That same reason, it just it gets so many cool textures real quick, real easy. Mm hmm. He. Uh, and I he's... don't know. If, I can't tell exactly what that was, but. Yeah, I was just seeing that it was giving us these kind of sharp edges and starting to pull some of the paint away. 
Mm-hmm. And we are back with Chelsea. And I'm, oh, now we're panning away from Chelsea. <laughs> And now we're back with John, um, <laughs> and John is working with this super bright green over top of this red color field, and I'm really impressed with uh, the brightness and opacity that he's able to get out of that. I would have thought that it would have gone muddy. What do you think? Yeah, the vibrancy is amazing. The way he was able to get those colors perfectly still vibrant, but be able to blend them so well and paint on top of it and yeah not get it muddy that that's awesome yeah i'm like did he it's hard to do sneak in here <laughs> earlier and and do his background and it's dry yeah. already but no we saw him <laughs> okay and i think that this is our wild card painter uh who was pulled from uh volunteers in the room and it looks like they've got a really cool oh kind of, really maybe a seascape possibly we'll have to see i guess <laughs> yeah lots yeah, of blue i could see that maybe a landscape maybe yeah just uh brushing in these beautiful soft uh what i think are, are clouds and mountains mm-hmm We've got some really nice blending there as well. And wow, to just be pulled up last minute. Right? That's awesome. I really hope that this is a, a seascape because uh, <laughs> I'm I'm looking at this person's yellow outfit and I'm picturing like a an old <laughs> salty sailor <laughs> in their <laughs> yellow wet gear. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, they, they came with the whole getup. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> I hope it is, yeah. <laughs> okay, and we got a duck flying at this fish now. Are we getting a battle? Is it a battle within a battle? Oh, it might be. And that reference photo above, I wonder if if that was a drawing or something that she did beforehand. Yeah. I uh, I do think, I think oh, that cool. that is hand drawn. But uh, I almost, I like That's that we awesome. can't quite see what the reference is. So that it, it'll still mm -hmm. have some elements of surprise for us in the final piece. Mm -hmm. Kind of cool that the fish is being, you know, with the bird. Mm -hmm. And maybe flying with a balloon, maybe. That's kind of cool. <laughs> so cool cheeky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always appreciate um, when artists bring a little bit of uh, whimsy and narrative to art battle. I agree. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And if this is a fish being carried by a balloon flying with a duck, then I think that's that's just about the most whimsy that I've ever seen. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I'm enjoying uh, these kind of painterly strokes around the fish, though, in this, like, muted green. I hope that we see Maggie bring that uh, more throughout the, the composition to kind of harmonize everything. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Those painterly brush strokes are awesome. You almost have to. It's 20 minutes on the clock. Yeah, it almost have to be those big, giant brush strokes. Yeah, for sure. And it's hard to dry brush at Art Battle, too, because you have a finite amount of brushes and paint is flying, all the paint mm -hmm. is wet. Right. No time to let it dry. Exactly. So we are just about 10 minutes through the first round um if you are out there in the internets watching and you want to support your favorite artist from this round head on over to artbattle.com vote where you will be able to vote for your favorite artists 
and also bid to take these works home. Uh, the top two artists from this round will move on to the third and final. And it's so important that you vote, like show your support for all the artists, pick your favorite. I know it's hard to do because they're all amazing. Yeah, every, every vote really does uh, count. We had our voting uh, manager, Gina, on the stream this weekend, and she knows just how tight of a race that it can be. So if you are if you don't feel like clicking the link, click the link. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, every single vote really, yeah, it really does count. It can come down to one vote between your favorite or the winner and uh, non-winner. This is, awesome. this is so interesting um, from Chelsea. So Chelsea, her studio work is very uh, dark and is based around kind of these monster characters. And I'm feeling oh, like cool. we're getting an abstracted sense of that now. So I wonder if she's going to bring more illustrative quality in. Yeah, it kind of looks like she's laying the groundwork for that. Mm hmm. Oh, and we're getting some great uh, flicking action from Fallon. Always love seeing that technique. These textures. Yeah, so cool. Different te techniques get different textures. So cool. And then going in there with, uh, with oh, her yeah. fingers as well. Yep, you were right. It's looking a little bit spacey. That's awesome. Nice. Galaxy-esque. All right. And now we're back with Brett. And this is some really interesting layering technique happening here. Yeah. Some very interesting textures he's able to get. Is that a toothbrush he's using? I think it is. Good catch. I totally that's would have awesome. missed that just looking at the texture, but like, oh, that's so fun. We have a, a balloon flying fish and a, and a piece being painted with a toothbrush. We're wilding out in Boston tonight. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen with our battle. <laughs> it's always fun. Always an adventure. <laughs> this, uh, this red is a nice contrast to this really uh, like muted, almost sea foamy blue green. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his color palette is is limited, so it's very, you know, down to just a couple of colors, but they work together so well. Mm -hmm. This looks each, beautiful on the canvas. Yeah, each one is kind of bringing its own note. Mm-hmm. And checking out... And combined with the textures he's able to get. Yeah, absolutely. Like, he's got these this swiping action. He's got some drips going on. Um, and then it looks like in the top corners that we've got some circular kind of stamping action as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. And now we're back with Fallon, and she's blending uh, this piece with her fingers. I wonder whether or not that's something that she is normally doing in the studio or if this is um, unique to her art battle approach. I wonder, yeah. Fingers are a great tool. That's awesome. It yeah. helps to blend really well. And with her soft blending that she's able to get with this heart, that's beautiful. Yeah, doing a great job. Adding to that glow technique. Exactly. And uh, I know that you and I are probably a little bit jealous as uh, oil painters. We would not typically be painting with our <laughs> fingers because we never get it off. But uh, I love seeing right. the translation <laughs> uh, of art into different media and usually how it's uh, being picked up in art battle in acrylic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the different mediums get different results. And with acrylic, there's a lot you can do. Yeah. Much more than, you know, like spray paint or oil paint like us. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and just, awesome. and then you're also, so one of the advantages I've always thought of uh, acrylic is that it dries so quickly but you don't necessarily have that advantage in art battle because it's so rapid that you might not have time for the um, paint to dry. So it's all about practicing, I think, the application. 
That is very true. Yeah. Knowing your paint, knowing how much time you have. Yeah. Because you don't have time to let it dry. That's for sure. <laughs> Every minute counts, you know, yeah. in battle. And with that said, uh, it looks like we have just about five minutes, maybe slightly less, uh, left in this round. And these artists are all very committed to their pieces. Uh, just starting to add in the final touches, really harmonizing their works at this stage. And we have a couple that have a similar palette. Um, that red, black, and white seems to work so well together. Very different paintings, but similar colors being used, which is kind of cool. Yeah, definitely. I love when Very that happens, uh, especially for the audience, because mm -hmm. they're having this color story experience that the artists have no idea about because they're just focused on their own individual pieces. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I wonder if this is a snake from John. Um, I know he's often doing kind of illustrative work with a lot of uh, black lines carving out the characters, and it looks like maybe that's what he's starting to add in. Oh, interesting, yeah. Yeah, that's what it looks like. What I'm really enjoying maybe about this piece is the gradient. A character? Yeah, some sort of some yeah, snake me too. turtle. <laughs> Something with a big mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <looks like> to <laughs> me. <laughs> That's cool. Does he make up his own characters? Is that kind of his work? Yeah, um, all original characters. Awesome. Oh, that's so hard to do. That's amazing. Oh, man, this is fun. Now we're back with Maggie, and your guess was correct with the red balloon so fun <laughs> i love that narrative that she did you know yeah the fish can't fly but he can <laughs> with the balloon <laughs> that's awesome it, it's such very a very whimsical i love it yeah it's such a fun piece um but it's actually really well executed as well i'm glad that we got uh that kind of painterly background that we were seeing at the beginning um harmonize the rest of the canvas Yes, definitely. Yeah, she kept that up, which I was glad for. That, mm -hmm. that was working well for her. That's awesome. Okay, wild card. Wow. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Yeah. That's amazing. So uh, for anyone out there wondering what a wild card is, a wild card at Art Battle is when uh, we have an open spot at the easel and we fill it with a volunteer from the audience. And so that person will put their name uh, in a hat if they want to participate. And then one person is called up to the easel. So you're really at an interesting state. You might not have an idea and you have to paint right away. Yeah, that is so hard to do. I mean, art battle is hard enough, even when you've practiced for weeks on end. And to be just up there, you know, last minute figuring out what you're going to paint that's amazing so good really. man kudos to them that's awesome yeah great job for that uh wild card artist loving the element of the silhouette there yeah very cool that looks like some of them are starting to add a little more detail as we get closer to the end here yeah getting that uh those, those big shapes. Yeah, those final uh, details in just 30 minutes left on the clock, or 30 seconds left on the clock. And the top two artists, as voted by the audience, will move on from this round into the final, where they will paint again, uh, and one single winner will be determined for the night, and that person will move on uh, to the Midwest Finals. And that's why it's so important to vote for your favorite artist or painting or whoever you want to support. Well, that's the end. <laughs> Time is up. Man, it goes so quickly. Uh, one of my favorite things is always seeing the artists uh, clapping for each other at the end, too. Yeah. 
And it's so fun to finally go and walk around and see what everyone else did. Because for those 20 minutes, you've been so focused on your own painting that you don't even, you know, know what the other, everyone else is doing. Yeah, absolutely. So, Heather, you're heading to the Midwest Finals on March 18th in Chicago, correct? Yes. Yes, I am. That's exciting. Do you have... I'm excited for it. Are yeah. you planning your pieces? Are you, are you the kind of artist that practices? Or do you go in uh, just seat of your pants <laughs> oh I definitely practice and I've started thinking about what I'm gonna do and I generally have a few that ideas that I try to practice and see what's gonna work and the thing is you never know you get to art battle it may change that night you may feel something else and decide that you're gonna paint a cat instead of a pig or you know <laughs> yeah. something like that so or a landscape instead of a figure so so you're going kind of off of yeah uh, like intuition, but also preparation. Yeah, I do a lot of prep work and then just kind of see how I feel when I get there. Um, I, I always feel like I have an idea, but it can change. I don't stick to it wholeheartedly or I guess I allow it to change if it, if I feel like it. <laughs> I love that. You have to have that flexibility. <laughs> exactly. And Heather, where can we find you uh, on the internet? Uh, my website is Heather Olson Art, and my last name Olson is O L S E N, and that's just my handle for everything. So Instagram, Twitter, just Heather Olson Art. Um, yeah. So if you want to find me, find all my stuff there. <laughs> awesome. Well, I know that I'll be following, and Heather, we can't wait to see you at the Midwest Finals. That'll be March 18th in Chicago. Once again, thank you so much to Heather Olson, Salt Lake City event winner. Moving on to the finals. Oh, thank you so much. It's and, an honor. And we will be back in just a few minutes as our team in Boston counts up the votes from this round um, and gets our second set of artists ready. We will be back uh, for round number two. Six new artists, six new canvas and more awesome art.
Okay, and here we are with Felipe. Peace. Uh, all for your votes. My name is Morgan Booth. I'm your commentator for tonight, and I am here with Art Battle Salt Lake City winner Heather Olson. Hi, Heather. Hi, everyone. Hi, Morgan. <laughs> welcome, welcome. So, Heather's going to be. Uh, Thanks so much for having me tonight. Absolutely. Uh, very happy to have you. And yeah, we've got six incredible artists. It uh, looks like they are underway. And starting uh, with some sketching here, I believe from Jen. Oh, Jen is going in with some uh, yellow paint right now. And some background work, laying in the groundwork. That's awesome. Oh, that's John. My uh, my screen was pixelated. Sorry, John. <laughs> Just trying to read the name cards. Okay, and here we are at easel number two with awesome. Maggie McCullen, uh, starting us off with what looks like a blue fish. And oh, that's gonna be awesome. And we can see that she's using her reference. Um, a sketch or a small painting that she made is sitting already at the top of the easel. I love uh, when artists bring their own original works uh, to support them as their references. I think that's so cool. And really helpful, too, I would think. I mean, I know I like to use a reference. Yeah. It makes things a little bit easier, especially under the time restraint, you know? Yeah, definitely. And that's uh, that's a new thing for art battle we've only started doing that in the last uh two years or so allowing references and we're finding that uh the quality of the work is really uh in leaps and bounds when artists are permitted that yeah right yeah i've noticed that also okay and seeing maggie uh just putting in some softer tones there. Okay, and here we are back with John, and it looks like John has uh, filled his whole canvas very rapidly with uh, a really gorgeous oh, color yeah. field. Big brush helped. Yeah, definitely. That's an awesome big brush. <laughs> and I believe that this is Chelsea. And Chelsea was a 2020 Texas finalist. So she is not here to play tonight. Oh, nice. Yeah. Serious contender. She's a, She's no rookie here. Ooh, oh, I'm loving this, like, the glow of this heart that, uh, I believe this is Fallon. Yeah, what she was able to do with those edges, get them nice and glowing, like that heart is literally beating or glowing. Yeah, just getting that gorgeous blend, giving you that kind of sense of, like, depth in the canvas. And she describes her work as psychedelic naturalism and uh, is often featuring a lot of galaxies and kind of otherworldly landscapes. So I feel like that's the vibe that we're getting here uh, with her. Oh, cool. Cool. There's some awesome tools being used, different than a paintbrush. Yeah. Is that uh, like that's a awesome. wedge or something that Brett's got there? Oh, we've panned away from him. Looks we'll like it. Back. Um, I, I have one of those that I use all the time and I love it. That same reason. It just, it gets so many cool textures real quick, real easy. Mm hmm. He, uh, and I don't know. I can't tell exactly what that was, but. Yeah, I was just seeing that it was giving us these kind of sharp edges and starting to pull some of the paint away. Mm hmm. And 
we are back with Chelsea and I'm oh now we're panning away from Chelsea <laughs> and now we're back with John um, <laughs> and John is working with this super bright green over top of this red color field and I'm really impressed with uh, the brightness and opacity that he's able to get out of that I would have thought that it would have gone muddy what do you think yeah, the vibrancy is amazing. The way he was able to get those colors perfectly still vibrant, but be able to blend them so well and paint on top of it. And yeah, not get it muddy. That, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm like, did he it's hard to do. sneak in here <laughs> earlier and, and do his background and it's dry yeah. already? But no, we saw him. Boy. Okay, and I think that this is our wild card painter uh, who was pulled from uh, volunteers in the room. And it looks like they've got a really cool. Oh, of, really? Maybe a seascape, possibly? We'll have to see, I guess. <laughs> yeah, lots yeah, of blue. I could see that. Maybe a landscape, maybe? Yeah. Just uh, brushing in these beautiful soft uh what i think are, are clouds and mountains mm -hmm. we've got some really nice blending there as well and wow to just be pulled up last minute right that's awesome i really hope that this is a a seascape because uh <laughs> I'm I'm looking at this person's yellow outfit and I'm picturing like a an old salty sailor <laughs> in their <laughs> yellow wet gear. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, they they came with the whole getup. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> I hope it is, yeah. <laughs> okay, and we got a duck flying at this fish now. Are we getting a battle? Is it a battle within a battle? Oh, it might be. And that reference photo above, I wonder if if that was a drawing or something that she did beforehand. Yeah. I uh, I do think, I think oh, that cool. that is hand drawn. But uh, I almost, I like That's that we awesome. can't quite see what the reference is. So that it, it'll still mm -hmm. have some elements of surprise for us in the final piece. Mm -hmm. Kind of cool that the fish is being, you know, with the bird mm -hmm. and maybe flying with a balloon, maybe. That's kind of cool. <laughs> so cool cheeky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always appreciate um, when artists bring a little bit of uh, whimsy and narrative to art battle. I agree. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And if this is a fish being carried by a balloon flying with a duck, then I think that's that's just about the most whimsy that I've ever seen. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. I'm enjoying uh, these kind of painterly strokes around the fish, though, in this like muted green. I hope that we see Maggie bring that uh, more throughout the the composition to kind of harmonize everything yeah yeah i agree those painterly brush strokes are awesome you almost have to with 20 minutes on the clock yeah you almost have to be those big giant brush strokes yeah for sure and it's hard to dry brush at art battle too because of a finite amount of brushes and paint is flying all the paint is mm -hmm. wet Right. No time to let it dry. Exactly. So we are just about 10 minutes through the first round. Um, if you are out there in the internets watching and you want to support your favorite artist from this round, head on over to artbattle.com slash vote where you will be able to vote for your favorite artists and also bid to take these works home. Uh, the top two artists from this round will move on to the third and final. And it's so important that you vote, like show your support for all the artists, pick your favorite. I know it's hard to do because they're all amazing. 
Yeah, every every vote really does uh, count. We had our voting uh, manager, Gina, on the stream this weekend, and she knows just how tight of a race that it can be. So if you're if you don't feel like clicking the link, click the link. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, every single vote really, yeah, it really does count. It can come down to one vote between your favorite or the winner and uh, non-winner. This That's is awesome. This is so interesting um, from Chelsea. So Chelsea, her studio work is very uh, dark and is based around kind of these monster characters. And... I'm feeling oh, like cool. we're getting an abstracted sense of that now, so I wonder if she's going to bring more illustrative quality in. Yeah, it kind of looks like she's laying the groundwork for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we're getting some great uh, flicking action from Fallon. Always love seeing that technique. These textures. Yeah, so cool. Different textures techniques get different textures so cool and then going in there with uh with oh, yeah. fingers as well yep you were right it's looking a little bit spacey that's awesome nice galaxy-esque all right and now we're back with brett and this is some really interesting layering technique happening here. Yeah. Some very interesting textures he's able to get. Is that a toothbrush he's using? I think it is. Good catch. I totally that's would have awesome. missed that just looking at the <laughs> texture. But, like, oh, that's so fun. We have a, a balloon flying fish and a, and a piece being painted with a toothbrush. We're wilding out in Boston tonight. <laughs> You never know what's going to happen with our battle. <laughs> it's always fun. Always an adventure. <laughs> this uh, this red is a nice contrast to this really uh, like muted, almost sea foamy blue green. Mm hmm. Yeah, his color palette is is limited, so it's very you know down to just a couple of colors, but they work together so well mm -hmm. this looks each, beautiful on the canvas yeah each one is kind of bringing its own note mm -hmm. and checking out and combined with the textures he's able to get yeah absolutely like he's got these this swiping action he's got some drips going on um and then it looks like in the top corners that we've got some circular kind of stamping action as well Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. And now we're back with Fallon, and she's blending uh, this piece with her fingers. I wonder whether or not that's something that she is normally doing in the studio, or if this is um, unique to her art battle approach. I wonder, yeah. Fingers are a great tool. That's awesome. It yeah. helps to blend really well, and with her soft blending that she's able to get with this heart, that's beautiful yeah i'm doing a great job adding to that glow technique exactly and uh, i know that you and i are probably a little bit jealous as uh, oil painters we would not typically be painting with our <laughs> fingers because we never get it off but uh i love seeing right. <laughs> the translation uh of art into different media and usually how it's uh, being picked up in art battle in acrylic mm -hmm. yeah the different mediums get different results and this acrylic there's a lot you can do yeah much more than you know like spray paint or oil paint like us but yeah absolutely yeah. and just awesome. and then you're also so one of the advantages i've always thought of uh acrylic is that it dries so quickly but you don't necessarily have that advantage in art battle because it's so rapid that you might not have time for the um, paint to dry so it's all about practicing i think the application that is very true yeah knowing your paint knowing how much time you have yeah because you don't have time to let it dry that's for sure <laughs> every minute counts you know yeah. battle and with that
Go for it. Welcome back to Art Battle Boston. Uh, we are here for the second round of tonight's Art Battle event. My name is Morgan Booth. I'm going to be your co-host for tonight. I'm here with Chris Pemberton, Art Battle co-founder. Hi, Chris. Hi, Morgan. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. I can't wait to see what these artists in Boston have for us tonight. Yeah, the, uh, the first round was awesome. Really, really strong round. Uh, and now we've got... But in Art Battle, it distills the whole thing down into 20 minutes. And there's nothing to hide. The artist's uh, process is fully on display, and we get to see the different stages. And uh, it's really like being with them in their studio. And um, with so many artists at one time, uh, it's a real treasure. And we have the special privilege, too, of being able to bring this to you guys live on the internet. Uh, with a camera Ooh. that gets up nice and close to the easels. Gets, uh, gets in on that nice, tasty paint texture. Yeah, it's the real treat for us to get to join these cities uh, at a distance. And we've seen uh, just so many great art communities across the country. And um, tonight we're seeing Boston, which is a real treat. And uh, in a month from now will be the Boston City Final, where the best artists from the events of this season will go head to head to find out who is going to represent Boston at the national championship taking place April 2nd in Wichita, Texas, Wichita Falls, Texas. Oh man, that's going to be amazing. That's going to be amazing. I can't wait. Just having um, a slight internet issue over at the venue, but that should be fixed in just a moment. Thank you guys for your patience. Yeah, there's a lot of different uh, technical factors in play for us to be able to bring these events live to you over the internet. And sometimes something doesn't work properly and uh, uh, we just have to um, make do and hold on until they get it fixed. So thank you, everyone, for your patience. We will be uh, showing you video from Boston as soon as we can. Um, and uh, meanwhile, if you haven't yet registered to vote in this event, you can vote remotely from your home. You can vote at go to artbattle.com slash vote and you can enter in your name and mobile number and you will get a link that allows you to vote and not only just to vote, but you can also take part in the silent auction, which is a way to take home one of these beautiful paintings uh no worries that you're looking watching from a distance we will ship the painting to you and uh it's a great way to start or continue uh an art collection uh you get to have a piece in your home that you saw created live uh it comes along with it comes with a great story and uh helps support the artists so go to artbattle.com slash vote and register right now and they're really fun to collect, too. I know that I'm uh, looking around my studio right now, and I'm like, oh, that's an art battle painting. Oh, that's an art battle painting. You just uh, you get attached to them, watching them being born, essentially. Oh, yeah, for sure. It'd be, it'd be kind of, it's habit-forming. I have uh, quite a few myself. Our battle painting <laughs> over the years. I, That's uh, an understatement. Yeah, I'm laughing a little bit because I've uh, I've seen Chris's collection and it is impressive. And there's quite a few pieces in there uh, that he scooped out from under my beds, also, or <laughs> uh, pieces that I've desired. And so I'll occasionally visit them uh, in Chris's art battle museum. <laughs> That's right. Maybe one day I'm going to put the collection up for auction if I get too many, but. Uh, as of right now, we've got uh, quite a good set here. And uh, if we see something we like tonight, who knows? One of your commentators might take one of these paintings home. Ooh. Uh, Chris, looks like our feed is back. If you want to give yourself a refresh. All right. Trying right now. And thanks again, everyone out there, for your patience.
Looks like these guys are just uh, just stepping up to the easels now. And lots of people in this crowd at uh, the Mighty Squirrel Brewing Company in Boston. Looks like they're having a great time. We've uh, it's a packed house. Yeah, this event is sold out actually. So uh, we've got as many as many people in here as we could possibly fit, and um, Art Battle is is doing very well in Boston. The community's to be taken to it, and we're very uh, honored to be holding place in the art community in Boston and in all the other cities where we have events. So uh, packed house here tonight at the Mighty Squirrel. And we're just about ready to see the second round of Art Battle Boston here. We have six painters. Uh, Morgan, do you want to tell us who's at the easel? At easel number one, we have Ananda Toulon, uh, and she has been painting with Art Battle since December 2009. Uh, she works for an organization called Artists for Humanity. Uh, she creates illustrative works based in fantasy. They're warm and vibrant and full of busy patterns and characters. At easel number two, also uh, for his first time was in December 2019, Nigel Jones. Uh, and Nigel is well known for building his own canvas in all of these crazy shapes that mimic um, graffiti writing and then painting cities on top of that. So reversing the graffiti being painted on the city. Uh, How and, interesting. I wonder if we're going to see that here tonight. Me too. Oh, and looks like we have just started... So that's Nigel at number two. At easel number three, we have uh, Jordan Gagné. And this is Jordan's first event. Um, another illustrator who uh, works with characters and heavy line work. And uh, I believe that we have a replacement artist at easel number four. And so... Once we swing over there, we'll be able to get the big reveal on who that is. At easel number five, we have Kennard Smith, uh, who does works that are quite abstracted, but still grounded um, in figurative realism. And also then in the final, we have Narvicto Jesus, who does a lot of quirky character work um, heavy black line work and uh, is also a digital and as well as traditional artist. So quite That's the great. selection. Quite the selection here. All right. Well, thanks for letting us know who we're seeing at the easel here tonight. Who are we looking at right now with the palette knife? Um, I am waiting until we step back to see the number on that. Uh, so that I can tell who it is. Okay, so this is easel number one. We've got Ananda, um, and it looks like Ananda is creating a portrait, and she's using her knife to uh, just edge in her shadows, which I think is a really cool technique. I'm, usually we don't see knife work until the later stages of the painting, especially a portrait. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, really interesting application technique here. Uh, just establishing her skin tones. We're seeing her go start with a heavy application and then kind of drag the paint um, into the areas that she wants it. I'm always fascinated by artists that can work with uh, palette, with uh, palette knives. It just seems like a challenging implement to me, but you get just such beautiful um, organic shapes. You get a lot of really great texture, and it is unusual to see a portrait painted with a palette knife, uh, especially in this short amount of time, as it's a little bit harder to get the fine detail, but uh, she's going for it. Awesome. Love it, Ananda. And here we are with Nigel. Oh, no, not Nigel. This is uh, Jordan. And here we're seeing Jordan using her signature 
uh, black line work to create a character. And definitely it looks like there's already something in there. We have a um, sort of a Cyclops looking figure. Yeah, that's cool. And we're getting in the um, symbol that's being applied to the top of the like hat looks like it's almost mimicking that eye that's down below. So really cool um, technique there already. You can tell that this is a well thought out um, design. Absolutely. Going to be very interesting to see what colors she adds to this. Her line work is very fine so far. Yeah, great uh, great job with the steady, steady line work. And we're seeing her just placing the very tip of her pinky onto the canvas, carefully avoiding any of the wet paint that she's already got on there uh, to steady this brush. And I just love seeing all of these little hacks that artists uh, come up with. Yeah, no, very interesting to watch the um, process of application. Sometimes artists steadying one hand with another as they work to put in fine details around wet paint. And uh, as you say here, she's using her left hand very carefully now and almost inking in those lines. Exactly. Yeah, very, uh, very tight technique. And I'm uh, just trying to see the name card here to see who we've got with us right now. But they... A lot of coverage on this canvas so far. Yeah, a lot of coverage, a lot of monochromatic coverage. Uh, and I'm a sucker for a monochromatic painting. I love, uh, love seeing different tones being pulled out of a color and seeing how far you can push it. And it looks like we're getting um, the suggestion of a possible portrait here. Yep, definitely. And uh, very interesting that she's used two pink tones so far and uh, got total, total canvas coverage. We can see just behind her in the background how much time is left. There's 14 minutes left in this. So she's been working for six minutes. And uh, now she is working on the face. Uh, Morgan, is it hard to paint on top of a layer of wet paint? Oh, man. It is so difficult in my experience. Um, it also really depends on what technique you're going for, if they want to work wet on wet. But personally, I think wet on wet is uh, it's a challenge in its own way, is that you can eat very easily over blend or muddy your colors. So for her to be using a monotone uh, kind of negates that a little bit in that she's still working in the same color family and not getting muddy. Yeah. That's uh, one thing you got to look out for when you get those mixing the wet on wet. You get in what Morgan referred to as the mud. And uh, once you get into the mud, it is almost impossible to get out. So. Yeah. And uh, now we are here with Kennard Smith, and he's not messing with any mud at all. Very careful, careful um, technique and outline usage here. Just really kissing the colors up against each other without mixing them. Yeah, for sure. And some st the colors are really popping on his canvas there. Yeah, great color choice. Um, I'm loving the red of the hair of that figure. And I believe that this is Narvicto now. And just waiting to get a little bit closer there. Looks like he's uh, creating what might be a flame with some dark background in the top half okay and we have paused our live feed but anticipating to be back in just a few moments yeah we just had a couple of technical difficulties here 
and uh, stick with us once again if you haven't yet please go to artbattle.com slash vote so that you can cast your vote and help choose who the winner is here tonight and we also have uh, rapidly updating pictures in that link as well um, so you'll be able to see on that link who you're voting for as well yeah very cool and um, once again you also get the opportunity to take part in the auction or follow along to see which paintings you like and how much they're going for um we see all ranges we see paintings starting at 55 dollars and um uh, just last week, we had a painting go for eleven hundred dollars, eleven hundred thirty-five dollars. So, um, twenty-minute painting, so awesome, so great, and Happy day for that uh, artist. really good for the artist to be compensated at that uh, level too for their work. So, um, please, if you want to take one of these pieces home, take part in the auction. We will ship the painting to you, so no worries about that, and. Uh, you can start or continue your collection. And Chris, we have some exciting events coming up um, as well, right? We certainly do. We are getting into championship season now. Oh, my favorite and, uh, season. Yeah, championship season is very exciting. We'll be having the finals in every city that uh, has been having regular events, every city and state. We're having finals coming up. So we've got events coming up in, uh, we've got final events coming up. Washington State Final, the Boston City Championship, Los Angeles City Championship, the New York City Finals. That's going to be a real barn burner. Uh, the Midwest Regional Championship, Chicago, the Phoenix City Championship. So we've got a lot of um, events coming up that are part of the championship series. Of course, the winner the one winner of each of those events goes through to the national finals, the U S art battle championships in Wichita Falls, Texas. Our painters will all be uh, flying down there and um, staying with the, in the wonderful town of Wichita Falls. We have wonderful organizers down there who are ready to put on a spectacle, a real uh, exciting show for the national championships. So we have a few events coming up, uh, before the finals, uh, just some last qualifying events. We have Art Battle Tacoma coming up on Friday. We have Art Battle Oakland coming up on Saturday. Uh, Art Battle Chicago next week. Uh, and um, we are just seeing so many talented painters. And, uh, of course, the paints, a lot of, oh, there's only one winner per event, but there's uh, many masterpieces made. And some of these great artists who didn't win are coming back in the final qualifying event to try and get that last spot into the finals. So uh, hopefully uh, you'll be able to see one in your city. Hopefully there's one close to you. If not, you'll be able to follow along here on artbattle.com. We will be live streaming as many of those events as possible. Uh, just doing our best to uh, help foster and build community of live art lovers across the country. So a very exciting time to be with us. Oh, man, that's incredible. Just the sheer number of paintings that had to have happened uh, for all of those artists to rise to the top. And now they're converging in this finals season and then will converge even further into the nationals. Just uh, I can't believe that that's coming up so quickly. Yeah. It's a very exciting spring, so we are uh, really honored to be working with just so many hundreds, hundreds of talented artists across the country, nearly a thousand artists across the country that we're working with, and we're meeting more all the time. And uh, these artists, uh, they love the performative aspect. They love showcasing their work to a wider audience. Um, if you are interested in participating in Art Battle, please go to artbattle.com to, uh, to register. That's artbattle.com slash artists. But if you go to artbattle.com, it's pretty clear which way to go uh, to find out how to apply to be in one of our live events. We have an event coming up in Salt Lake City, actually, uh, 
So we're trying to get these communities going in as many different places across the country as we can. So good. Um, Chris looks like our feed has popped back in for the final seven minutes of the second round. Um, and I got to tell you, some of these paintings are looking incredible. Right now we're looking at um, Ananda Toulon and Ananda has created this really thoughtful portrait just so with so many vibrant colors going on um, and wow. just such a gorgeous expression. And to think that she started this with a knife um, and has been able to achieve all of these delicate details is so impressive. That is really impressive. This portrait is really outstanding. And now she's going back to, to the knife. We didn't get to see her filling in these details, unfortunately. Hard for us to keep track of every one of the paintings uh, as they're going through the progress. Of course, our camera has to move around, but she did an amazing job of filling in the features on that face and now going back to the palette knife for the background. And here we are uh, with this artist who we saw in the beginning was applying a lot of uh, heavy paint and now she's doing the same thing, just creating a lot of movement. Um, in the different kind of quadrants of this abstracted portrait. And I think yeah, having a little... I think having a little bit of trouble um, with what we were talking about earlier, doing that wet-on-wet wet approach, as we can see that she's trying to refine the lips... Um, but having trouble with that application sticking a little bit. Yeah, that can be tricky for sure. Something that uh, you got to manage very carefully to get your painting to turn out the way that you want it. And here we are back with Ananda. Um, and so I was wondering what she had been doing uh, to be getting all of this smooth texture when we had been seeing her working with a knife. And I think that we just got our answer. I saw her working with a silicone wedge in the other hand, and so she's applying a heavy uh, dose of paint with the knife and then wiping it away um, and pulling some of it back with that silicone wedge. So cool. Love to see an artist working with, with both hands, too. That's yeah. um, That takes uh, just so much practice to be able to work with both hands. Uh, and we've seen a few artists be able to do it uh, uh, across the country and around the world, but uh, it's a real talent. Absolutely. And here uh, we are with Jordan again, and just very, very clean, clean line work. Um, and we're also starting to get a variance of the thickness of that line work as she's adding these triangles into the iris of her uh, pharaoh cyclops cool cool uh, concept yeah definitely a very cool concept and a, and a piece that's quite striking one of the uh, beautiful things about art battles we get so many different styles both uh, colors and um, formation and uh, and values on the painting and so really nice to see this uh, that black and white piece here now we're seeing this uh, other portrait with these this monotones uh, going on. One that's been worked, greatly been worked wet on wet, but it looks like she's been able to stay out of the muddy area and just brushing in some highlights onto the face right now. And really concentrating on um, emphasizing the roundness of, uh, of these spheres here and also of the planes in the face. Uh, balancing the angles with the roundness by uh, throwing in her highlights, really establishing that shape. Oh, yeah. And look at this piece here. I just love this piece. So cool. Oh, this cool is awesome. Piece. I love uh, seeing the works evolve and the graphic quality of this piece is so interesting in that we're getting two separate portraits in one um, and the use of the vibrant unmixed color here 
is really playing well to this aesthetic. Yeah, though this is really good. No, not one square inch of mess here on this canvas. So careful with his color work and his lines. You can see him right now bringing some some colors and lines. Looks like maybe it's an extended earring or something uh, onto the black half of this portrait, uh, just with such vibrancy uh, and not not even one little bit of mess or mud. Uh, just really well executed piece. Yeah, absolutely. And also thinking about how you're you can often be fairly limited in the amount of brushes that you have, and to have that many colors and to get them that clean um, and not muddied up with dirty brushes is a feat in itself. Yeah, for sure. Here we have uh, what looks like a flame baby. Maybe this is. Awesome. I believe that this is uh, Nervicto Jesus, and Nervicto is well known for doing really quirky characters uh, in his studio work, so we're absolutely seeing that here. Uh, this is a very quirky piece, but uh, executed well, I think, in, uh, in the flame that's coming off of this fire baby. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but that is uh, a really striking piece. Done a great job with the shadow underneath the figure. Um, just just makes him pop off the background there. Yeah, it's fun uh, seeing the little upturn of the feet there as well, adding that kind of interesting movement and like a sense of cheekiness. Okay, final ten seconds. Make sure that you guys register to vote at artbattle.com slash vote. The top two artists from this round will move on to the third and final round. Where they will compete once again with a blank canvas and one winner of the night will be crowned. All right. Here we go. That 20 minutes went by pretty quickly. We okay, have very job, different guys. pieces. And um, again, we have a full house audience here. We are sold out tonight at the Mighty Squirrel. So we are very excited. Just so much enthusiasm for our battle in the Boston community. Is that a rock climbing wall? I mean, that, that looks like a rock climbing wall. Uh-huh. What a oh. venue. What a, what a special place that must be. Yeah. All right, and we will be back in just a few minutes as our team over at Art Battle Boston uh, counts up your votes, so make sure that you get them in. Uh, The top two artists from round one and top two artists from round two will head into the final uh, where they will paint again, and one winner will be crowned. We will be back in just just one winner, but um, in an unusual fact, because they've had less events, the top four painters. So all the winners tonight will be moving through to the city final, which is happening one month from tonight on March the 7th. So uh, yeah, very exciting. So this vote for the second round here is very important. This is a way to send an artist, not just to the final tonight, but also city final where we're going to see the best artists from this season. So get your vote in there right now. And, um, Make sure that uh, you register to vote and get your vote in so that you can help send your favorite artist through to the final and to the city final. Uh, Very important. And uh, we're going to take a break while the audience votes and while the team resets for the final round and while we count the votes. And we will be back with the final round of Art Battle Boston. Oh, so exciting. Just about five minutes, maybe slightly less, uh, left in this round. And these artists are all very committed to their pieces. 
uh, just starting to add in the final touches, really harmonizing their works at this stage. And we have a couple that have a similar palette, um, that red, black, and white seems to work so well together. Very different paintings, but similar colors being used, which is kind of cool. Yeah, definitely. I love when Very that happens, paintings, uh, especially for the audience, because mm -hmm. they're having this color story experience that the artists have no idea about because they're just focused on their own individual pieces. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I wonder if this is a snake from John. Um, I know he's often doing kind of illustrative work with a lot of uh, black lines carving out the characters and it looks like maybe that's what he's starting to add in. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it looks like. What I'm really enjoying maybe about this piece is the gradient. A character? Yeah, some sort of some yeah, snake me too. turtle. <laughs> Something with a big mouth. Yeah. Looks like to me. <laughs> that's cool. Does he make up his own characters? Is that kind of his work? Yeah, um, all original characters. Awesome. Oh, that's so hard to do. That's amazing. Oh, man, this is fun. Now we're back with Maggie, and your guess was correct with the red balloon. So fun. <laughs> I love that narrative that she did, you know? Yeah. The fish can't fly, but he can. <laughs> it's a balloon. <laughs> that's awesome. It's such Very a whimsical. I love it. Yeah, it's such a fun piece, um, but it's actually really well executed as well. I'm glad that we got uh, that kind of painterly background that we were seeing at the beginning. Um, harmonize the rest of the canvas. Yes, definitely. Yeah, she kept that up, which I was glad for. That mm -hmm. that was working well for her. That's awesome. Okay, wild card. Wow. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. That's amazing. So uh, for anyone out there wondering what a wild card is, a wild card at Art Battle is when uh, we have an open spot at the easel and we fill it with a volunteer from the audience. And so that person will put their name uh, in a hat if they want to participate. And then one person is called up to the easel. So you're really at an interesting state. You might not have an idea and you have to paint right away. Yeah, that is so hard to do. I mean, art battle is hard enough even when you've practiced for weeks on end and to be just up there, you know, last minute, figuring out what you're going to paint, that's amazing. So good. Really. Man, kudos to them. That's awesome. Yeah, great job for that uh, wild card artist. Loving the element of the silhouette there. Yeah, very cool. It looks like some of them are starting to add a little more detail as we get closer to the end here. Yeah, getting that... Uh, those, those big shapes. Yeah, those final uh, details in just 30 minutes left on the clock, or 30 seconds left on the clock. And the top two artists, as voted by the audience, will move on from this round into the final, where they will paint again, uh, and one single winner will be determined for the night and that person will move on uh, to the Midwest finals. And that's why it's so important to vote for your favorite artist or painting or whoever you want to support. Well, that's the end. <laughs> Time is up, man, it goes so quickly. Uh, one of my favorite things is always seeing the artists uh, clapping for each other at the end, too. Yeah. And it's so fun to finally go and walk around and see what everyone else did. Because for those 20 minutes, you've been so focused on your own painting that you don't even, you know, know what the other, everyone else is doing. Yeah, absolutely. So, Heather, you're heading to the Midwest Finals on March 18th in Chicago, correct? 
Yes, yes, I am. That's exciting. Do you have? I'm excited for it. Are yeah. You planning your pieces? Are you are you the kind of artist that practices, or do you go in, uh, just seat of your pants? <laughs> oh, I definitely practice, and I've started thinking about what I'm going to do, and I generally have a few that ideas that I try to practice and see what's going to work. And the thing is, you never know. You get to art battle. It may change that night. You may feel something else and decide that you're going to paint a cat instead of a pig or, you know, yeah. <laughs> something like that. So, or a landscape instead of a figure. So, so you're going kind of off of, yeah. uh, like, intuition, but also preparation? Yeah, I do a lot of prep work and then just kind of see how I feel when I get there. Um, I, I always feel like I have an idea, but it can change i don't stick to it wholeheartedly or i guess i allow it to change if it if i feel like it <laughs> i love that you have to have that flexibility <laughs> exactly and heather where can we find you uh on the internet uh, my website is heather olson art and my last name olson is o-l-s-e-n and that's just my handle for everything. So Instagram, Twitter, just Heather Olson Art. Um, yeah. So if you want to find me, find all my stuff there. <laughs> awesome. Well, I know that I'll be following. And Heather, we can't wait to see you at the Midwest Finals. That'll be March 18th in Chicago. Once again, thank you so much to Heather Olson, Salt Lake City event winner. Moving on to the finals. Oh, thank you so much. It's and, an honor. And we will be back in just a few minutes as our team in Boston counts up the votes from this round um, and gets our second set of artists ready. We will be back uh, for round number two, six new artists, six new canvas, and more awesome art.
very happy to have you. And yeah, we've got six incredible artists. Uh, it looks like they are underway. And starting uh, with some sketching here, I believe from Jen. Oh, Jen is going in with some uh, yellow paint right now. And some background work, laying in the groundwork. That's awesome. Oh, that's John. My uh, my screen was pixelated. Sorry, John. <laughs> Just trying to read the name cards. <laughs> Okay, and here we are at easel number two with awesome. Maggie McCullen, uh, starting us off with what looks like a blue fish. And, oh, that's going to be awesome. And we can see that she's using her reference, um, a sketch or a small painting that she made is sitting already at the top of the easel. I love uh, when artists bring their own original works uh, to support them as their references. I think that's so cool. And really helpful, too, I would think. I mean, I know I like to use a reference. Yeah. It makes things a little bit easier, especially under the time restraint, you know? Yeah, definitely. And that's uh, that's a new thing for Art Battle. We've only started doing that in the last uh, two years or so, allowing references. And we're finding that uh, the quality of the work is really... Uh, in leaps and bounds when artists are permitted that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I've noticed that also. Okay. And seeing Maggie uh, just putting in some softer tones there. Okay, and here we are back with John, and it looks like John has uh, filled his whole canvas very rapidly with uh, a really gorgeous oh, color yeah. field. Big brush helps. Yeah, definitely. That's an awesome big brush. <laughs> yeah. And I believe that this is Chelsea, and Chelsea was a 2020 Texas finalist. So she is not here to play tonight. Oh, nice. Yeah. Serious contender. She's a, she's no rookie here. Ooh. Oh, I'm loving this, like, the glow of this heart that uh, I believe this is Fallon. Yeah. What she was able to do with those edges, get them nice and glowing, like that heart is literally beating or glowing. Yeah, just getting that gorgeous blend, giving you that kind of sense of, like, depth in the canvas. And she describes her work as psychedelic naturalism and uh, is often featuring a lot of galaxies and kind of otherworldly landscapes. So I feel like that's the vibe that we're getting here. Uh, with her. Oh, cool. Cool. There's some awesome tools being used, different than a paintbrush. Yeah. Is that uh, like That's a awesome. wedge or something that Brett's got there? Oh, we've panned away from him. Looks we'll like it. Um, I, I have one of those that I use all the time, and I love it. That same reason. It just it gets so many cool textures real quick, real easy. Mm-hmm. He, uh, and I don't know. I can't tell exactly what that was, but yeah, I was just seeing that it was giving us these kind of sharp edges and starting to pull some of the paint away. Mm -hmm. And we are back with Chelsea and I'm oh now we're panning away from Chelsea here <laughs> and now we're back with John um, <laughs> and John is working with this super bright green over top of this red color field and I'm really impressed with uh, the brightness and opacity that he's able to get out of that I would have thought that it would have gone muddy what do you think 
Yeah, the vibrancy is amazing. The way he was able to get those colors perfectly still vibrant, but be able to blend them so well and paint on top of it. And yeah, not get it muddy. That, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm like, did he hard to do. sneak in here <laughs> earlier and, and do his background and it's dry yeah. already? But no, we saw him. <laughs> Okay, and I think that this is our wild card painter uh, who was pulled from uh, volunteers in the room. And it looks like they've got a really cool. Oh, of, really? Maybe a seascape, possibly? We'll have to see, I guess. <laughs> yeah, lots yeah, of blue. I could see that. Maybe a landscape, maybe? Yeah. Just uh, brushing in these beautiful, soft, uh, what I think are, are clouds and mountains. Mm hmm They've got some really nice blending there as well. And wow, to just be pulled up last minute. Right? That's awesome. I really hope that this is a, a seascape because uh, <laughs> I'm... I'm looking at this person's yellow outfit and I'm picturing like a an old salty sailor <laughs> in their <laughs> yellow wet gear. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, they they came with the whole getup. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> I hope it is, yeah. <laughs> okay, and we got a duck flying at this fish now. Are we getting a battle? Is it a battle within a battle? Oh, it might be. And that reference photo above, I wonder if if that was a drawing or something that she did beforehand. Yeah. I uh, I do think, I think that oh, cool. that is hand drawn. But uh, I almost, I like That's that we awesome. can't quite see what the reference is. So that it, it'll still mm -hmm. have some elements of surprise for us in the final piece. Mm -hmm. Kind of cool that the fish is being, you know, with the bird mm -hmm. and maybe flying with a balloon, maybe. That's kind of cool. <laughs> so cool cheeky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always appreciate um, when artists bring a little bit of uh, whimsy and narrative to art battle. I agree. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And if this is a fish being carried by a balloon flying with a duck, then I think that's that's just about the most whimsy that I've ever seen. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. I'm enjoying uh, these kind of painterly strokes around the fish, though, in this like muted green. I hope that we see Maggie bring that uh, more throughout the the composition to kind of harmonize everything. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Those painterly brush strokes are awesome. You almost have to with 20 minutes on the clock. Yeah. You almost have to be those big giant brush strokes. Yeah, for sure. And it's hard to dry brush at art battle too, because you have a finite amount of brushes and paint is flying. All the paint is mm -hmm. wet. Right. No time to let it dry. Exactly. So we are just about 10 minutes through the first round. Um, if you are out there in the internets watching and you want to support your favorite artist from this round, head on over to artbattle.com slash vote where you will be able to vote for your favorite artists and also bid to take these works home. Uh, the top two artists from this round will move on to the third and final. And it's so important that you vote, like show your support for all the artists, pick your favorite. I know it's hard to do because they're all amazing. Yeah, every every vote really does uh, count. We had our voting uh, manager, Gina, on the stream this weekend, and she knows just how tight of a race that it can be. So if you're, if you don't feel like clicking the link, click the link. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, every single vote really, yeah, it really does count. It can come down to one vote between your favorite or the winner and uh, 
non-winner. This That's is awesome. This is so interesting um, from Chelsea. So Chelsea, her studio work is very uh, dark and is based around kind of these monster characters. And I'm feeling oh, like cool. we're getting an abstracted sense of that now. So I wonder if she's going to bring more illustrative quality in. Yeah, it kind of looks like she's laying the groundwork for that. Mm hmm. Oh, and we're getting some great uh, flicking action from Fallon. Always love seeing that technique. These textures. Yeah, so cool. Different te techniques get different textures. So cool. And then going in there with, uh, with oh, her yeah. fingers as well. Yep, you were right. It's looking a little bit spacey. That's awesome. Nice. Galaxy-esque. All right. And now we're back with Brett. And this is some really interesting layering technique happening here. Yeah. Some very interesting textures he's able to get. Is that a toothbrush he's using? I think it is. Good catch. I totally that's would have awesome. missed that just looking at the texture, but like, oh, that's so fun. We have a, a balloon flying fish and a, and a piece being painted with a toothbrush. We're wilding out in Boston tonight. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen with our guys. <laughs> it's always fun. Always an adventure. <laughs> this, uh, this red is a nice contrast to this really uh, like muted, almost sea foamy blue green. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his color palette is is limited, so it's very, you know, down to just a couple of colors, but they work together so well. Mm -hmm. This looks each, beautiful on the canvas. Yeah, each one is kind of bringing its own note. Mm-hmm. And checking out... And combined with the textures he's able to get. Yeah, absolutely. Like, he's got these this swiping action. He's got some drips going on. Um, and then it looks like in the top corners that we've got some circular kind of stamping action as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. And now we're back with Fallon and she's blending uh, this piece with her fingers. I wonder whether or not that's something that she's normally doing in the studio or if this is um, unique to her art battle approach. I wonder, yeah. Fingers are a great tool. That's awesome. It yeah. helps to blend really well. And with her soft blending that she's able to get with this heart, that's beautiful. Yeah, I'm doing a great job. Adding to that glow technique. Exactly. And uh, I know that you and I are probably a little bit jealous as uh, oil painters. We would not typically be painting with our <laughs> fingers because we never get it off. But uh, I love seeing right. the translation <laughs> uh, of art into different media and usually how it's uh, being picked up in art battle in acrylic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the different mediums get different results. And with acrylic, there's a lot you can do. Yeah. Much more than, you know, like spray paint or oil paint like us. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And just, awesome. and then you're also, so one of the advantages I've always thought of uh, acrylic is that it dries so quickly but you don't necessarily have that advantage in art battle because it's so rapid that you might not have time for the um, paint to dry. So it's all about practicing, I think, the application. That is very true, yeah. Knowing your paint, knowing how much time you have, yeah. Because you don't have time to let it dry, that's for sure. <laughs> Every minute counts in yeah. art battle. And with that said, uh, it looks like we have just about five minutes, maybe slightly less, uh, left in this round. And these artists are all very committed to their pieces, uh, just starting to add in the final touches, really harmonizing their works at this stage. And we have a couple that have a similar palette. Um, that red, black, and white seems to work so well together. Very different paintings, but similar colors being used, which is kind of cool. 
Yeah, definitely. I love when Very that happens, painting, uh, especially for the audience because mm -hmm. they're having this color story experience that the artists have no idea about because they're just focused on their own individual pieces. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I wonder if this is a snake from John. Um, I know he's often doing kind of illustrative work with a lot of uh, black lines carving out the characters and it looks like maybe that's what he's starting to add in. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it looks like. What I'm really enjoying maybe about this piece is the gradient. A character? Yeah, some sort of some yeah, snake me too. turtle. <laughs> Something with a big mouth. Yeah. Looks like <laughs> to me. <laughs> that's cool. Does he make up his own characters? Is that kind of his work? Yeah, um, all original characters. Awesome. Oh, that's so hard to do. That's amazing. Oh, man, this is fun. Now we're back with Maggie, and... Okay. All right, and welcome back to Art Battle Boston. We are here for the third and final round of the night. Uh, my name is Morgan Booth, and I am here with Art Battle co-founder Chris Pemberton. Hi, Chris. Hi, Morgan. It's a pleasure to be here with you tonight. So, oh, there's been just such an awesome array of art uh, this evening, and I can't wait uh, to see what this final round yields from round number one, we have Maggie McMullen and Fallen Ray uh, painting with us, and who the artists that made it from the second round were Ananda Toulon and Narbicto de Jesus. So Ananda uh, had that gorgeous uh, portrait that she was executing with the palette knife. Narbicto had the flame baby. Uh, Maggie had the balloon fish with the duck and Fallon had the heart-shaped galaxy. So welcoming all of these guys back. It's a treat to be able to watch these best artists create a second painting. Right? I mean, it's one thing to create, it's one thing to do a live painting. It's another thing to do two live paintings in one night. And so these artists are really putting themselves out there. Uh, they're really have overcome any fears that they have of painting at the easel in front of people and uh it's just a, it's a real treat to get to watch them go for a second time yeah in uh in the first round sometimes you can see some nerves from uh some of the artists and then in the second round you really see them stepping up to the easel their backs are a little straighter they uh they have their qualifying round win under their belt and they're there to win in the third Yep, it's all on the line now. This is the final round. So here we are with uh, Maggie. And looks like Maggie has two uh, drinking vessels, is my guess at this point, just from the shape that they are. And I'm starting to see a little bit of orange uh, in one of the glasses. And I can also see that she has her easel, uh, her reference pinned at the top of her easel once again, which uh, I think is just such a, a great technique where she's done these kind of small studies uh, for this larger 20 minute piece. Yeah, it's very interesting to see who comes into the final round with a, with a second painting already planned out. 
and who's swinging it. There's a, always a, a combination of both. Some artists are uh, just plan one painting and some artists plan two paintings with hopes of getting to the final. So it's very interesting to see which ones are prepared and uh, which ones are uh, just pulling inspiration from their surroundings. Yeah, you almost end up by like, am I going to jinx myself if I plan two paintings? Um, but anyone that's ever made it to the final that has planned two has never regretted it. Let me tell you that. No, for sure. It's it's good to have your uh, your painting planned out. Twenty minutes is not a lot of time, and uh, if you don't have a plan, you are subject to having accidents at the easel which can sometimes turn out to be happy accidents uh, <laughs> and some sometimes not so uh, uh planning is good we suggest that planning and practicing is good uh and in which one of these painters uh comes through here tonight with the best piece and looks like oh is the feed popping back in we're yep. very hopeful i can see our uh, camera person Possibly getting a backup camera now. And checking out this lovely crowd. Uh, and here we are back with Maggie. Um, and I think that she's painting a either a goldfish or a koi in one of these water glasses. I love Maggie's sense of humor. Uh, she's painted some really whimsical pieces. Her first round um, was a fish that had a balloon tied around it and was floating next to a duck. Like, where do you come up with that? <laughs> <laughs> it's so cheeky. Yeah, for sure. Well, one of the um, aspects of art battle is that uh, we don't give a theme. So we believe very strongly in the artist's um, personal experience and the artist's own vision, and we let them paint whatever they want. Uh, and because of that, we a variety of imagination coming from these artists yeah just everyone really gets to shine in their own style and just distilling that style down into 20 minutes definitely and it's it's a pleasure to be to see so many different styles we see we see just every imaginable style and even when you think you've seen it all um the creativity of the artists from across the country and around the world uh, always shines through. We are always surprised and uh, we always things that uh, we weren't expecting that we haven't seen before. Uh, it is such a to be connected to so many different processes. All right, and we are back once again with Maggie and I can see that Maggie is uh, throwing in her background very, very rapidly with uh, some really aggressive uh, strokes. I always appreciate uh, seeing an artist really kind of attacking the canvas like that with that level of confidence. Yeah, absolutely. And here we are with Fallon. Um, and Fallon is, once again, looks like she's taking on kind of one of her galaxy uh, spacescapes. And we're seeing this beautiful undulating uh, glow coming from the bottom of the canvas. And it's just gorgeous the way that she's layering this gradient. Yeah, really something special here going on. Uh, we see these artists uh, doing work that they've per perhaps perfected in their studio. As before, some of them are just winging it. But... Usually these final round painters have an idea of what they're doing and um, are to their studio style. Yeah, the uh, just the the translation from studio style to 20 minute piece is so uh, so enthralling to see. Yeah, it's it's such a treat to be able to watch them and we're still seeing here she's working on some details on the lower edge of her sort of space theme. Maybe she's working on the world right now. Yeah, that's, oh, that's beautiful. The depth that she's been able uh, to get here is just gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely. And back with Maggie again and this koi. 
uh, which is rendered so gesturally, and I love that. Yeah. yeah. Here she's being very careful on her background. And uh, right now we have similar colors in the glass and in the background. Mm -hmm. So it will be interesting to see if she goes wet on wet back into the glass to change the colors or if she leaves them the same. We're going to see definitely some detail in the in the left hand glass here. Uh, we're going to see something added by her. I wonder if it's going to be another goldfish or if it's something else. Uh, but um, again, I was, I was wondering if those were pint glasses that taking inspiration from her surroundings here tonight at the Mighty Squirrel Brewing Company. But uh, got a reference material there. She'd already planned it. Mm hmm. And we're, uh, I think it's kind of a play on glass half full, glass half empty. Uh, all right, and here we are with Narvicto and another one of his uh, characters. And in this one, he's got a figure with a giant rolling tongue um, and the word yes over where the eyes would be on the figure. So interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Again, it's early, so we're going to see a lot more detail coming through here on his piece. Uh, but uh, very striking already. Uh, he does a great job of this illustrative sort of approach to his uh, paintings. And uh, and again, it's it's in the same similar, it's in a similar style, but a totally different piece from his first piece. So uh, we're seeing some variety and skill here from Narvicto. Yeah, and the way that he executes is really interesting as well in that uh, a lot of artists who have more of an illustrative background will kind of block in uh, shapes in a very like careful way. Nervicto kind of creates this abstract composition almost and then controls the shapes then uh, by adding line work on top of that. Yeah, absolutely. Every artist has their own process and... Uh... And uh, we're his very carefully done, very experienced. I don't know if he has experience with live painting, but uh, he is nailing it here so far tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And here we are with Ananda, um, another beautiful portrait. We're getting um, kind of a three quarter view of the face. One of the eyes is obscured. And she's just throwing in um, some beautiful detail work now, um, establishing the shape and contour of the eyes and the nose. Yeah. Very interesting. I wonder if this is the same. It looks like a different character than the one she painted. You can see her previous painting is actually right behind her on the um, auction play there. Oh, that's so fun to be able to see uh, the direct comparison. Yeah, and you can see similarities in the lips and in the eyes. Uh, definitely all within her style and her way of rendering a face. But um, she's done such a good job. She just, with small amount of paint, has created such a clear and well-rendered uh, face here. Um, it is a place to watch her paint and uh, as we saw with her last painting she brings in the details after she she marks it out with the palette knife uh, and um, to watch absolutely and uh, here we are back with Narvicto and we've got a little figure now hanging off of the tongue uh, Oh, wow. Of this larger creature. It's so interesting watching the way that he's he's executing this. Um, there's re He's really drawing with these larger shapes and then just honing them in. Um, and, then, and you can see just the very careful uh, way that he's applying this black line work in the shadow of the hood. And just in the lines of the clothing there. Yeah, that's that's very well done. That figure is uh, 
re really well rendered there on the tongue. We see a little bit of the wet on wet problem coming through on the leg of the figure. We can see the tongue through the paint a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, but he's going to have some time at the end maybe to uh, make that a little more solid. And here we are back with Maggie. And Maggie is still working in this uh, gray tone and looks like she's just kind of cutting away a little bit um, at that koi fish to get work in those details and uh, hone the silhouette there. And just getting into the details of the face. Just getting into the details here. Yeah, the details on this uh, fish coming out quite a well illustrated face. Again, working from a reference. Oh, we see some slash work that's gone on up in the outer reaches of the sky of this piece. Uh, we weren't watching at the time where the camera was somewhere else, but looks like some very carefully executed um, star pattern splashed out now. Oh, and I love the way that she's using her hands to get these super, super soft blends. Not afraid to get really in there. Yeah. Looks like maybe a moonscape. Looks like maybe we're looking at uh, uh, a view of the moon, although the uh, atmosphere sort of looks like the auroras on Earth. Uh, we're going to see her working to uh, flush those out a little bit. She's back in there with the same color, trying to take back some of what she's taken away. Oh, I love that. Working with her hands. Yeah, so great. And just like creating kind of almost like a smokiness. Um, when she's doing that blend with her hands. Yeah, for sure. And she's really, often we'll see uh, artists do the finger blending or get in there with some finger painting, and we see them just touching with the, uh, the tips of their fingers. But with Fallon, we're really seeing her go in with the full uh, use of the flats of her fingers, which I don't think that I've seen before. Yeah, the only thing we're missing is seeing her clean her hand on her clothing. <laughs> <laughs> these, these painters have uh, largely kept the paint off their clothing here tonight. Uh, usually we see some uh, some quite some messy painters getting uh, using their pants as a mixed palette and uh, w wiping their hands on it. But uh, pretty neat and tidy for these four. Yeah, and uh, and even that said, she's wearing a cream-colored sweater too. Quite the uh, the brave soul. And we're now yeah. into the final two minutes of the round. Uh, if you are out there in the internet watching and you are loving these guys, uh, make sure that you support them by going over to artbattle.com/vote uh, and vote for your favorite artist. Yeah, for sure. You can help decide who is going to be crowned the winner tonight and uh, get your votes in there. You can also take part in the silent auction. We have a bid on most of the paintings so far tonight. So a lot of interest from the, uh, uh, the patrons in the house and perhaps some of you watching on the stream. Uh, these are great pieces at a great starter price to uh, add to your collection. So Someone's definitely going to take home this uh, stunning uh, art, illustrative piece here. And so fun that the, the tongue has a face now. Yeah. Oh, wow. Beautiful job from uh, Ananda. 
just really uh, joyful piece and loving the addition of this kind of uh, abstracted floral in the background. Yeah. A very interesting piece here with the uh, the um, subject matter holding up an orange covering half of their face. A very interesting pose, but uh, 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 perfectly executed here. And now we see artists as they do working with the canvas in their hand. 30 seconds left, they're saying. 30 seconds. Yeah, I love So the I final touches are going in here. Yeah, that's really cool. Wow, really uh, well executed round. This is going to be a tough situation for the voters out there in the room and on yeah. the internet. And yeah. brushes are down. Brushes down. And hands down, too. <laughs> wow, wow, great job by the these artists. Yeah, great job indeed. It is going to be a tough decision for everyone who's voting. The, the people who are at the Mighty Squirrel tonight and people online watching with us here who get to cast their vote, it is going to be a very hard decision. These are four very excellent and four very different pieces. Yeah, really uh, quite the breadth of uh styles in this round we had the uh whimsical and cheeky piece by maggie with the kind of uh the the joke of the glass half full uh from fallon we had that beautiful uh gorgeous gradient blue galaxy from ananda we had that incredible portrait um with the unique pose holding the fruit by its face and with narvicto uh, De Jesus, the how how are we going to describe this? The the tongue guy, but it's just such a unique piece that it's hard to put into words. Yeah. Near Victor's uh, style, even uh, a very unique piece, definitely something for the first time there, and uh, so so well executed, so fun, clean lines. Um, so much going on it speaks to so many different emotions too uh just a real wonder to get to see that but uh, now is the time that uh, we're going to cast our votes so go to artbattle.com slash vote and register to vote if you haven't already you probably have so you're probably looking right now at the finished pieces on the website uh, i mean on the phone on the um, voting feature and um, trying to decide which one gets your vote to be the champion of Art Battle Boston tonight. Ugh. It's a tough choice. And we will... Yeah, I don't know who I'm going to vote for. I really don't know here. It's a tough choice. Yeah, nail biter. And we will be back in just a few moments as we count these votes. All right.
balloon. So fun. <laughs> I love that narrative that she did, you know. Yeah. The fish can't fly, but he can. <laughs> it's a balloon. <laughs> That's awesome. It, it's such Very a... Very whimsical. I love it. Yeah, it's such a fun piece. Um, but it's actually really well executed as well. I'm glad that we got uh, that kind of painterly background that we were seeing at the beginning um, harmonize the rest of the canvas. Yes, definitely. Yeah, she kept that up, which I was glad for. That, mm -hmm. that was a, working well for her. That's awesome. Okay, wild card. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. Yeah. That's amazing. So uh, for anyone out there wondering what a wild card is, a wild card at Art Battle is when uh, we have an open spot at the easel and we fill it with a volunteer from the audience. And so that person will put their name uh, in a hat if they want to participate. And then one person is called up to the easel. So you're really at an interesting state. You might not have an idea and you have to paint right away. Yeah, that is so hard to do. I mean, art battle is hard enough, even when you've practiced for weeks on end, and to be just up there, you know, last minute, figuring out what you're going to paint, that's amazing. So good. Really... Man, kudos to them. That's awesome. Yeah, great job for that uh, wildcard artist. Loving the element of the silhouette there. Yeah, very cool. Now it looks like some of them are starting to add a little more detail as we get closer to the end here. Yeah, getting that... Uh, those, those big shapes. Yeah, those final uh, details in. Just 30 minutes left on the clock, or 30 seconds left on the clock. And the top two artists, as voted by the audience, will move on from this round into the final, where they will paint again, uh, and one single winner will be determined for the night and that person will move on uh to the midwest finals and that's why it's so important to vote for your favorite artist or painting or whoever you want to support well that's the end <laughs> time is up man it goes so quickly uh, one of my favorite things is always seeing the artists uh, clapping for each other at the end, too. Yeah. And it's so fun to finally go and walk around and see what everyone else did. Because for those 20 minutes, you've been so focused on your own painting that you don't even, you know, know what the other, everyone else is doing. Yeah, absolutely. So, Heather, you're heading to the Midwest Finals on March 18th in Chicago, correct? Yes, yes I am. That's exciting. Do you have I'm excited for it. Are yeah. you planning your pieces? Are you are you the kind of artist that practices or do you go in uh just seat of your pants? <laughs> oh, I definitely practice and I've started thinking about what I'm gonna do and I generally have a few that ideas that I try to practice and see what's gonna work and the thing is you never know. You get to art battle it may change that night. You may feel something else and decide that you're going to paint a cat instead of a pig or, you know, yeah. <laughs> something like that. So, or a landscape instead of a figure. So, so you're going kind of off of, yeah. uh, like intuition, but also preparation. Yeah. I do a lot of prep work and then just kind of see how I feel when I get there. Um, I, I always feel like I have an idea, but it can change. I don't stick to it wholeheartedly, or I guess I allow it to change if it if I feel like it. <laughs> I love that. You have to have that flexibility. <laughs> exactly. And Heather, where can we find you uh, on the internet? Uh, my website is Heather Olson Art, and my last name Olson is O L S E N. And that's just my handle for everything. So Instagram, Twitter, just Heather Olson Art. Um, yeah, so if you want to find me, find all my stuff there. <laughs> awesome. Well, I know that I'll be following. And Heather, we can't wait to see you at the Midwest Finals. That'll be March 18th in Chicago. Once again, thank you so much to Heather Olson, Salt Lake City event winner. 
moving on to the finals. Oh, thank you so much. It's and, an honor. And we will be back in just a few minutes as our team in Boston counts up the votes from this round um, and gets our second set of artists ready. We will be back uh, for round number two. Six new artists, six new canvas, and more awesome art.